Hello everybody, time to look at the endgame combat options for Factorio. The most over-the-top, powerful tools that the game allows for us to deal with those enemy incursions or expand. We'll start with our armor. Power Armor Mark II, we've got a 10x10 grid. We're up to a 30 inventory size bonus, the usual enhancements to our resistances. But the key item here is the portable fusion reactor in the larger grid. So. 4x4 four four for the fusion reactor, that's quite a lot of space, and these are not super cheap to build, but they produce 50% more power than if we put 16 portable solar panels in here. Plus, they can run during the entire day, so they don't have that 30% energy loss that you would if you're running solar power. Combine that together, this is over twice the power. For the most part, this should be the only thing you use unless you want to cram in a small solar panel somewhere other and it's hard for me to think of a good use case where you really want to do that. We've got the exoskeletons, of course. So lots of speed now with five of them around. A couple of the Mark II RoboPorts. Those allow for more robots to be used than the Mark I. And we could add in some batteries here, some laser defense or another exoskeleton or whatever. We've got plenty of speed, able to zip around very quickly. Really no need for that. Then we have... Our military one and these three fusion reactors are not quite enough to power these 12 personal laser defense but they will handle most of it and then the battery storage here two mark twos more than sufficient to run these for quite a while if needed making up the difference so just a general much larger upgrade in terms of our firepower that we can walk around with automatically then we have artillery and artillery is just nuts because of the range it gives. Minimum range of 32, but 224 automatic range and 560 manual. We'll see the difference in a bit. We're gonna look at the automatic first. And these artillery shells, they take up one slot each in our inventory. So they're rather bulky. Let's just throw a few of these in here. We can see the gun extending and it's turning, it's gonna aim, okay, it's firing off at this group over here and they're getting irritated, they're gonna come at us. If you do this, you wanna be prepared for them to hit you, but it's just going to easily handle any structure that it might happen to hit. Let's walk out here with our laser. And nice knowing all of you fun bugs. Then there is also the artillery wagon option. If we just lay down some tracks here, slap that on and for some reason these ignore the normal stacking rule you can just stack artillery shells in this instead of having a larger area inside for internal I don't know why that is it's just sort of factorial logic now let's try the manual because they only have that limited range limited being relative they will automatically shoot at but if we just sort of paint an area like this, you can see that's gonna fire off over there. Let's see our damage. Got these little crosshairs of where we told it to fire. And incoming. So yes. We can just simply obliterate things from a very, very long distance. And this is often done for people who like to go past the rocket launch. You simply take a wide area, take a whole bunch of artillery, clear them out. Very useful, obviously, if you want to defend your walls and clear out enemy expansion automatically without having to actually go out and do it each time. Then you can have artillery near your walls to go out and make sure that happens long before they're actually going to reach you. And once again, our lasers handling the task there. This fun fellow here is the Spider-Tron, the ultimate combat vehicle. It has an internal grid, 10 by six. And I think on the one row, a portable fusion reactor plus exoskeletons is pretty much an automatic, the way you want to use it. It's debatable what you might want up here, but I got a couple batteries and personal laser defenses to aid with our defense. It is capable of requesting items logistically. It's basically got this internal little buffer chest thing going on. So it can handle all of that for us. And we can just send spider trons out, for example, we can control them remotely, we can control them in packs, and so they can go out and literally do construction tasks. Like they can go to an area and build a solar farm. They can go to an area, drop down a bunch of landfill to fill in a lake. Whatever, remotely, 
without the player even going. Then it can also auto target. We've got the rockets here that I'm using. That's just because it's what I had on hand. They've got explosive rockets, which, you know, wider blast area, obviously somewhat more damage, a little bit more expensive. But you can also get caught in the blast. That's one reason I'm not using them. And these can even use atomic bombs. We'll get to those in a bit. Then auto-targeting, either without or with the gunner. And I'm going to leave it at with the gunner on as we're just going to walk around in this. But you can do it both ways. Again, if you want them remote, then you can do the without gunner part only. And these walk over any obstacle. Over cliffs, over trees, over your buildings, over trains. You will not ever run into a train if you're in a Spider-Tron. They can try to walk over water, but they can only cross short distances. Can't even think about getting across to this. But there's a pack of enemies down here stuck on an island. We can demonstrate this. And we are going to switch our armor out so that we are using our combat armor. So we have our personal laser defense plus the personal laser defense from the Spider-Tron plus all of its rockets. And each of these rockets will fire sequentially. So we can literally just walk into the enemy here. And voila. The lasers won't target anything that a rocket is already firing at. So they just simply take care of that business. And you just literally don't have to worry about firing. There's no internal fuel that's needed for this, unlike the tank and the automobile. So you just walk through the enemy bases as long as they aren't massively huge. And you walk out virtually unscathed. Let's take out a couple more good sized bases here, at least decent for our particular settings. And if we were doing explosives, the explosive rockets, we'll head down to one that's even a little bit bigger. Then what we would do is we would more hang around the edge of them and just sort of circle around so we didn't get hit too much in the blast radius. I'd like to come in within the area itself perhaps a little bit close to the edge, but just blast, blast, blast away. And in all of that, you can see how much damage we've taken. Barely any at all. So as long as our rockets hold out, we can just sit here and flatten the enemy to our heart's content, occasionally go back to rearm, do a bit of repairing every once in a while, but it's very, very low maintenance. Then there is the atomic bomb, a weapon that is expensive, extremely powerful, but also requires care in using. To build these, you need 30 of the good uranium, the uranium-235. You also need explosives and a rocket control unit, so it's not cheap. You can see the various area of effects there. It's going to destroy cliffs and has a very powerful explosion, which does more damage in certain ranges and then expanding out. You can see the largest one is a size 35 area of effect but it still does significant damage out that far. It's very easy to kill yourself with these, especially if you decide that you're going to put them in a Spider-Tron and set it to automatic targeting. There's a pretty popular meme or set of memes that goes around about a Spider-Tron just hanging out in your factory near a heavy production area, maybe a bunch of assembly machines, maybe a bunch of smelters. A lone enemy unit comes in, or maybe a small group of biters or spitters that fires off the bomb, and... Look, I destroyed them, along with a nice big section of your factory. But up here, there is a group of enemies, a moderate sized base that I'll use as a good testing ground. I want to fire this near the middle. There we go, and then we run away. And boom, there it goes. Okay. We return. And there's a few stray stragglers, some of them from other nearby areas. But as far as this cluster, we have a smoldering crater, literally smoldering, and that's it. So the combination of these tools, pretty much any amount of enemy. Once you've got a bunch of artillery and you've got Spider-Tron, or you got a pack of Spider-Trons if you want them, atomic bombs, purely optional, just for the LOL factor pretty much, you can handle any level of resistance you're going to see in Factorio. And going forward, now all we have left to do is launch the rocket and win. So that will be coming up in the next episode. Thanks, everybody, for watching.